Good morning, you beautiful people. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. Now, I didn't pre-order Cold War for my PlayStation 4, so I had to wait for the open beta weekend to get to experience it. So, the weekend came, I plugged in my keyboard, mouse, and monitor to the PlayStation 4, and I am very disappointed. And I, I want you guys to understand, I am used to 1080p, 100 plus FPS, with zero mouse input delay, and just the best gaming experience that a PC can offer. And to go from that to what the beta gave me an experience of is incredibly difficult. First and foremost, the mouse input delay on PlayStation 4 is terrible. It's absolutely awful. Uh, and then we have a 60 FPS, and I would argue it didn't feel like a 60 FPS. It felt like a 40 FPS or 45 or a 50 FPS. It was struggling to keep up, especially when there were explosions and and whenever I shot, because there's a lot of effects, like didn't feel like 60 FPS all the time. In fact, the loading screens, the map loading screens going into and out of the maps, I it looked like they were 10 frames a second, 15 frames a second. It was a slideshow. It was terrible. And then at times it really did feel, especially in the combined arms or whatever the new 10v10, 12v12 thing is, ground war, it didn't feel like 1080p to me. It really felt jagged, it really felt pixelated, didn't look clean, didn't look great. And I thought, you know, maybe it's me, maybe it's it's donuts. So I played a game of Modern Warfare 2019 immediately after it. I thought, you know, maybe it's been a while since I played Call of Duty Multiplayer. And here is that game of Modern Warfare 2019. Long story short, I don't think it's me. I don't think I'm the variable here that, that is making this game poor. So, all that being said, the core gameplay experience of the PS4 and that hardware really affected negatively my experience of the beta. Now, let's actually talk about the beta. First and foremost, time to kill, hit detection, lag compensation. What you're hearing is true. I haven't felt this way about a game since Black Ops 2. I mean, Black Ops 3 had it pretty severely too, but I quit and went to zombies right away. But Black Ops 2 and Modern Warfare 3, the worst netcode lag compensation we've ever seen in Call of Duty history, Black Ops 2. It, gunfights are 50-50. You heard it from Drifter, you heard it from Exclusive Ace, you're hearing it uh, everywhere. The gunfights are so inconsistent. And again, maybe it's because Modern Warfare 2019 was so good and those gunfights felt so good that going to this just feels... Like going into a Call of Duty from decades ago. It was bad. So, so bad. Um, so bad that everyone's up in arms about skill-based matchmaking. And uh, I couldn't tell you if it was in the game or not. Because all the connections and the gunfights felt so inconsistent that, you know, I didn't know if it was the gun I was using. I didn't know if it was the connection. I didn't know. Like, I tried to use a multitude of different guns. But all anyone ever seemed to be using was the MP5. So... It's hard to tell, but this game, this game's got some problems. And it's also so clunky. People are saying that it feels really smooth. And again, this could be a PS4 thing. This could be a uh, 60 FPS thing, but it feels so clunky. Like my, oh, it felt so, so clunky. Like switching weapons felt clunky. Proning and crouching take forever. I love drop shotting. I love jump shotting. They are each useful in tactics in a first person shooter. And drop shotting is dead. It's dead, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, uh, how how could they take away that skill ceiling? Oh, it's terrible. It's so clunky, and then sliding, and then add in sliding. It's just it's so it's so weird. It's it feels so clunky and so bad. Next up, the map design. A lot of people are crying for the old Treyarch three lane map design. To which I say, 
This is the old Treyarch 3 lane map design. You know, I think it takes me, especially me, a while to really understand and grasp the concept of map design, you know, when a new game comes out. But these are three lane maps. These are definitely either, you know, the Sledgehammer or Treyarch version of three lane maps. It is very simple, not a lot of flank routes, not a lot of room for player creativity, and very limiting to the gameplay. I mean, even in satellite where they're like, ooh, you can snipe, ooh, you can use a long ranged gun and you can get close with the shot. It's two lanes. You know, the middle is a cluster. The left side uh, or the right side, depending on which side of the map you're on, just sand dunes and that's open where you can do your long range sniping and, and LMGing, whatever. And then on the right side or the inside, you have your SMG shotgun, not even shotgun, you have your SMG range and that's no different than any other Treyarch map ever. So uh, people who love Treyarch maps, you guys are gonna like this game. Uh, one of the changes that they made from the beta or from the alpha to the beta are the footsteps. And the footsteps were one of the only thing that I was pleasantly surprised by in the alpha. I could hear people and I could sound whore people and I could understand where people were and where they're going, where they're coming from. And I could rush pretty effectively, no more. No more that the footsteps are muddied, muddled, whatever that word is. They are muffled. They are quieter. They are not really directional. It's just, it's poor. It's really, really poor. They took something good and they made it worse. And that's really frustrating to me because now the, the spatial awareness, the situational awareness players have has decreased and it's not great. It's not great for gameplay. It's not great for the skill ceiling either, which is, which is a shame because that silence is a perk here, you know? And it's like, Treyarch is like, oh yeah, Dead Science needs to be a perk. Except Dead Science is pretty useless because he can't hear footsteps anyway. And then Modern Warfare is over here like, no, we want people to hear footsteps. Uh, so much so that, you, you know, Dead Science is never a thing. It's like, guys, there's a balance. Like, put in Dead Silence and put in good footsteps. Is it that difficult? It, it, it's just, we haven't got this right ever in Call of Duty and it just baffles me. It baffles me how the answer's right there, but the developers seem to be too stupid to recognize it. And the rest of my concerns, those are the, those are the core fundamental aspects of, of this game that just bother me that I'm just not gonna enjoy. You know, this is definitely a Treyarch game. I don't think anybody, if you follow my channel, I don't think any of you are surprised by this because you know how much I hate Treyarch multiplayers and this is just a Treyarch multiplayer. You know, it really felt like the alpha was a mix between Sledgehammer and, and Treyarch. This is just Treyarch. This is just a Treyarch game now. They've made many improvements in air quotes, and it feels just like a Treyarch game now. And uh, it's, it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And the uh, the rest here are could be classified as nitpicks that I had. Um, the grenades are so strong. I mean, if you're anywhere near the explosion, you're gonna die or get down to one health, one hit point of health. It is ridiculously strong and flag jacket is going to be necessary but it's not unlocked until level 29 which in a couple hours of the beta i got to rank 9 10 maybe oh, it's it's rough it's rough flag jacket's going to be necessary um score streaks i don't know how to say this i'm really disappointed because in the in the alpha i didn't really see a problem with it i kind of liked the idea you know of how it kind of ramps up as you're on a kill streak to earn you more score, but I thought they would actually like balance it, I guess, because I'll throw up the gameplay here. I went on maybe a seven to eight kill streak, and I was like, sweet, I'm gonna get my kill streaks. I'm gonna roll over my kill streaks because when you're on a seven or eight kill streak in Call of Duty, that's pretty much the higher tier of kill streaks. You know, is up that you know from seven to ten, those are your highest kill kill streaks. And I'm just going ham, and it's late in the game, so I've already earned my UAV. I've already earned my you know airstrike, whatever. And I go on my seven eight kill streak, and I need another like I die, and then I need another like flag capture and like three more kills before I get my attack helicopter. And the worst part about it is it, it was towards the end of the game and I never even called in my attack helicopter because someone else called in their attack helicopter. This whole score streak system needs to be reworked or rebalanced. And I think it needs to be rebalanced because I don't think they're going back to regular score streaks anyway. It is just, we're gonna see what we saw in World War II with that one perk where people run the high kill streaks and they play hard, they, f they fling themselves on objectives and the last 10 minutes of the game 
is going to be dedicated to everyone's chopper gunners and AC-130s, and it's just going to be it's going to be a cluster. Every the end of every game is going to be a cluster because of these kill streaks, and it's just it, it doesn't reward going on kill streaks like it should, and. It's not rewarding objective play because everyone gets the same kill streaks at the end of the game. It's the worst of both worlds. It's a participation trophy, and you're not rewarding the killers who actually defend objectives. And it's just, it's the worst of both worlds. And I can't believe it's in the state that it is right now. And the last thing that all of you are going to hate me for is the implementation of Ghost. Um, I've always hated, ever since Black Ops 2, I've always hated the implementation of Ghost. Uh, in Treyarch titles, because the fact that you're not moving, you get shown on the minimap, is such a... I don't know how to say it. It's a surface-level, idiotic way of thinking about the game. Because when you look at all the reasons you're not moving, camping is one of the many reasons you could not be moving. I mean, there's taking cover because this is a first person shooter you need to take cover because you're shooting at someone you're not moving um because you're reloading because you just shot at someone or because you're healing up because you pushed into the enemy spawn and you just got shot so you need to heal and not move for a little bit and guess what all of those instances rushers do good call of duty players do and all of those instances are going to show you on the minimap and that is just the most idiotic knee-jerk reaction to a problem that isn't even a problem to avoid camping like that's just it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense it's not logically sound to add on top of that the uav spam is incredible now to fix this today in the beta they said oh we increased the cooldown time of the uav so that there's less up in the air which is a band-aid fix because now you're increasing the cooldown time for a kill streak that you should be reward rewarding players for using it's just they don't know what's going on they don't understand the balance between the uav and the player and and i don't think the community does because yeah here's a hot take beautiful people we full of hot takes this video the satcom system in call of duty ghost was perfect boom i said it i said it the, the satcom system you know what, maybe if it was up in the sky, maybe if it acted like a UAV that you could shoot down, the SATCOM system was great because it was so weak. You think SATCOMs are trash, right? SATCOMs are so bad. That's what they wanted you to do. That's what they wanted you to think because now not as many people are running SATCOMs. Now you know that not many people run SATCOMs, so therefore I don't need to run Ghost. I don't need to run, it was called Off the Grid in Ghost, I don't need to run Off the Grid. But the smart thing about that is, because less people ran off the grid, because less people ran Assassin or Ghost or whatever you want to call it, the SATCOM was now more effective. It was more effective if you chose to run it. If you were smart and you played as a team and you sat your SATCOM down with someone else who called in their SATCOM. It was so, so powerful and it was perfectly balanced. Ghost isn't overpowered. The UAV is. Beautiful people, I'm ready for the dislikes. But I'm a zombies guy, and I am so excited for the zombies experience. I am probably going to give this beta another chance when it comes to the PC. But uh, right now, it's looking pretty rough. And the community seems to be in agreement about, you know, most of these things. The hit detection, skill-based matchmaking, which, like you know, like I said, I, it was such a poor performance. I couldn't even tell if there was skill-based matchmaking in it. And oh, that's just it's, it was such a frustrating experience. And... I am so glad that we have zombies, you know, I, I hear people talking about wanting to delay the game, wanting to fix this or fix that, and it just makes me so happy that I'm not part of that community, that I'm not, you know, that I don't have to live in that reality where this game is, is the only form of enjoyment that I have, because I got zombies, and zombies lives on forever, and I absolutely love it, I'm excited for zombies, all the changes and all that, you know, I, you guys have seen the video, I'm worried about it, but... I'm excited for it either way. It's a new zombies experience, and I'm excited for at least that. We've got around a month here, beautiful people. Just one more month, and uh, we should be should be getting this game. So, uh, hey, hope you guys have enjoyed. Tell me your thoughts about the beta, both in the comment section and in my Discord. Link in the description. But uh, until the next absolutely beautiful, sort of 1080p, sort of 60fps Call of Duty morning, I'll catch up with you guys later. And as always, stay beautiful.